Well, I don't think you'll be expecting me to be doing this. <laughs> I wasn't expecting me to be doing this because I was never ever a messy crafter. Didn't do mess, didn't like it, didn't like stuff on my hands, wasn't having it. And then I went to Cadence and everything changed. <laughs> So I have been given the opportunity to do um, a couple of videos for you showing you pouring medium and paints. Now what's really interesting about this is we did this, after, uh, it's quite a funny story actually this, so there were about 12 of us went to Cadence. Um, a lot of, lot, most of the others had done mixed media before and I'd seen an acrylic pour on TV but I'd never seen one up close and personal. So we gathered around the lady that was teaching us and she did this pour and then she got a blowtorch and blasted it with a blowtorch and all these cells appeared and the, every single person in that room went, I wish we'd videoed your face because it was absolutely amazing. And I, don't, I haven't had the chance to do anything with it really since we came back and that was, gosh, pre-COVID. So it's a few years ago now. But I have to say by the time she'd told us to go back to a seats and given us the product that we were going to use. I'd ordered a blowtorch and it was being delivered to my house the day after because I was just, I knew that it was going to become an obsession. Now, a few things to know. You do need quite a decent sized table because it is a bit messy. I'm not going to lie to you, it is messy. So being a crafter, I've come up with a few things that can help. So mylar, sheets of mylar um, on your table or cling wrap it or something to protect the table, definitely you need. And you need somewhere to be able to leave this to dry and it needs to dry probably, I would say 48 to 72 hours to get it completely dry because you're putting quite a lot of paint and it's quite thick layers and then you're adding silicone oil in depending on which technique you're doing. So the first one we're going to look at is our all-in-one. Now this was the one that we used when we went to Cadence and what's lovely about this is you've got your primary colours in here. So you, you know that when you add the yellow with the teal you're going to end up with green somewhere which is really cool. Now this paint has everything in that you need. So it has the correct quantity of the hybrid acrylic. It also then has the pouring medium mixed in and silicone oil mixed into that. And what silicone oil does is it works against the paint, it repels the paint and it creates what they call cells. So if I just bring in a pour that I've done with this, I'm going to bring two in actually and show you the difference. So the first one that I did was a big one. I mean, I don't do things by halves in case you didn't know. <laughs> I don't do things by halves. This was the first one that I did on a big canvas. This is a, I'm going to say, probably 16 by 16 inch canvas. And this was with the paints that we're about to use. And you can see some of the cells have started to appear, but not as many as I wanted. So when I did the second one, one of, one of the reasons for that was because I didn't have the blowtorch. I didn't have any gas for it. So I ordered the blowtorch years ago. I didn't order the gas. So I managed to get some butane gas. This one was one that I did with exactly the same paints, same colour combination, but I added in extra silicone oil. So what I'm going to do this time is do one that I'm hoping is going to be in between the two. So I'm going to do it without extra silicone oil, but using the blowtorch, because that's the only way that we're going to know what we're going to get. There will be a lot of what you will see as waste paint. So what I've done is I've got four pieces of our thin mylar and the reason I'm using it on mylar is because it will, you can peel the paint off once it's completely cured. Now I would wait a good three or four days before you peel it off this, but I'm hoping, and I'm not promising, so don't hold me to this, but I am hoping that we might be able to then scan this in because it's on a plastic base. So we might be able to scan this in and we might be able to cut stuff out. I certainly wouldn't die cut it because I think the acrylic paint will stick to your dye but I'm going to try it. So, you know, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, I'll cut, I'll cut it on my trimmer or whatever, but I'll make use of it. So there is a little element of wasting some paint, but you get a fabulous result. The other thing that I've done is gone out and bought myself a cake turntable because A, it's higher up on the table and I like to pour stood up and B, I can spin it. 
and what that does is finish off the edges now I am no expert on acrylic paint pouring so please don't look at me like some of these people out there that are on YouTube that have done this for years and absolutely amazing at it but what's really nice is that when you try something new when you have a you you get a passion for it to be able to come into a studio and share my journey with you and you come on that journey at the same level with me is really exciting for me because you'll come up with different things and we'll be able to have conversations and chat about what worked and what didn't work and have you tried this and have you tried that and we'll start this whole community so don't be scared of this now would I put something like that on my wall absolutely would I turn that into a piece of artwork and maybe have black butterflies going right the way across? Yes, I would. I would use it as a background without a shadow of a doubt. Some of these I just think are absolutely beautiful. I mean, this one's got the aqua stone varnish on the top of it. Now, one thing that I mistake that I did make, and I will tell you all my, all my mistakes so that you learn from it as well, is I forgot to wipe the canvas over once it was dry to get rid of any residue silicone oil. So when I put the Aquastone varnish on, I'm thinking this isn't leveling out and it's because it was being the silicone was repelling it. So that's another tip. If you're going to do that, make sure you wipe it back. And then afterwards, we'll do a different pour um, using silicone oil. And we'll try and do one maybe every month or so just to, you know, keep, keep it going because it is really exciting so I've got a 12 by 12 canvas already pre-stretched on a frame which is kind of what you need because you're going to have to tip this paint it is you will get it all over your hands I'm just going to tell you that because you will so take your watch off before you start it if you're precious about your jewelry take that off too and then you're going to need a cup now I'm going to use one of these cups I think this is I want to say an eight ounce cup and there will be plenty of paint in this. The other thing that I would recommend you have is the top of a cardboard box. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's a brilliant little tool. And I've been watching this guy called Joe M on YouTube. He is brilliant at what he does. And I've, this is what kind of what's got me into it. Somebody recommended him and I was like a little bit hooked after that. Um, and he's very good to watch. So any, anybody that you can get learn stuff from is just a joy. The other thing that I've got is a blowtorch. There is a lock mechanism on it, but you'll see it just, it gives it this direct flame. And what that will do is activate the cells. So let's do it a little bit at a time and go through this journey together. So I'm gonna start, remember when you're pouring your paint into a cup, whatever color you put on the bottom is gonna to end up at the top because you're gonna flip the cup, okay? So I'm gonna start with, let's start with some teal. Now, as I said, give this a shake because this has got everything mixed in. This is quite a fluid paint. It's quite runny, but you want that because you want the paint to be able to move. I know when I watch Joe, he does a lot of, um, he puts a lot of paint on the canvas first and then flips the cup into it. But that for me seems like a lot of paint. There's a, obviously, you know, it might get to a stage where I'm like, okay, now I know why he's doing it. But at the moment that was using quite a lot of paint. And all I'm going to do is build up layers. Okay, so I'm going to start with the teal because I like the teal colour and I'm just going to put a decent amount into the bottom of my cup like that. So we've got, if we go on the other, there you go, you can see it's about up to that first line on the cup, maybe a little bit higher. Okay, so we've got our paint in there. Now I don't need to add anything else into this because it's already got the silicone oil in and I'm quite happy pouring it directly out of the bottle. Bubbles, you will get bubbles, blowtorch much better than a heat gun I found it's just more direct and it's a, a stronger um, heat right so then let's put in some red let's just go for it and use all the different colors because we can okay so now I'm going to pour this down the side because what I want almost is this red to sit on top it doesn't matter if it sinks into the paint but if you can pour it down the side like that and then let it sit on top. It will all eventually sink in, but let's try and make it as easy as possible. So if I now add yellow, let's add some white into that next. Let's just break that up a little bit. And the white you're probably gonna use the most. You can mix your own. So we sell the silicone oil. I'll show you that in a little while. We sell the pouring medium. I'll show you that too. And then you can mix it with any of your cadence paints, including your Dora Hybrid Metallics, which gives it the most wonderful 
cosmic shimmer. I mean, it is just amazing. And I was, I, if somebody had told me five, six years ago that I'd be doing this, I'd have been, I would have laughed them out of the room. I'd have been like, not in a million years am I going to start pouring paint. No, just no. But it's something, and I keep trying to do this and it never works, it's something that is for me. It's my craft. It's not anymore. Well, it is because I get to share it with you guys. But you know what I mean? It's it's one of those that I'll just disappear. I kept doing it over the weekend. Mick's like, where are you going now? So I'm just just I'm just gonna do another pour. It's like you're a bit obsessed with this pour, aren't you? I was like, just a bit, yeah. But then he walked into the room and went, Have you done those? I was like, Yeah, he's like, they're amazing. And they are. It's and it's not me being clever, it's just the product and how it works. It really is superb. Right, let's add some of this darker navy in Parliament. This is called. I wonder why it's called Parliament. That's an interesting name, isn't it, for a Turkish company anyway? Right, let's pop some of our dark blue in there. And I'm going to more or less fill this cup. So you do use, I'm not going to tell you fibs, you do use quite a lot of paint, okay? But this is a piece of artwork for your wall. Get them on these auction sites, get them sold. They are, and every single one that you do, this is what I really love, is unique. You will never, ever, ever, ever get two exactly the same, just because of the nature of what it is. It just doesn't happen like that. Right, I'm going to add red in now. So this will give me purple. It will give me a darker purple and it will also give me an orange because it'll hit some of that yellow. And I'm just adding this in. I reckon you would probably get a couple of 12 by 12 canvases out of one of these sets. You might get, you might get two smaller ones too. It depends on how much paint you use and how crazy you go with it. And I have to say, I do go a little bit crazy because I love it. Right, I think that's enough. We'll soon find out if it's not. Okay, so it's about, well, I would say, one and a half centimetres off the top. And you can already see the bubbles starting to come to the surface. And it's pulling that colour up. So I've got little yellow bubbles appearing in there. Right, now, depending on who you watch on YouTube will depend on how they do this. The guy that I've watched put, puts a big puddle of paint, white paint on there and then he just literally flips the cup. I'm not brave enough to do that yet. I'm certainly not brave enough to do it in the studio at work because it's somebody else's floor, <laughs> not mine. So we're going to stand up because I find it easier doing it this way. So I'm going to take my cup, I'm going to put it on top of my turntable and I'm going to put my canvas on top of the cup, okay? This is the way I find it easier. I'm then gonna lift the whole thing and then I'm gonna flip it. And then very, very, very carefully, pull my hand out of there like that, okay? And we're gonna leave it for a few minutes, to, well, a few seconds, just so that all that paint just sinks down. I'm gonna to talk to you about this because this is one of the best tips that I've picked up from YouTube. And just creating a corner out of a cardboard box. Now, we all know you get loads of these delivered because you get loads of these delivered from Highlight Crafts, let alone Amazon and all the other places. <laughs> so we all have a stash of cardboard and this you're gonna put on the corner so that when you tip it to cover the whole canvas, it goes into a right angle. And it's a really cool little tip, otherwise you're forever trying to get the edges in and do all that other stuff with it. Right, are we ready? <laughs> this is the exciting bit. This is the bit that's a little bit scary but a little bit exciting at the same time. It's one of those where you're like, <gasps> I imagine it's what you like if you do a parachute jump. Right, ready? So let's get this. And we're just going to lift this cup. And all this paint is going to come pouring out and that's going to go straight into the bin. Okay. So we've got a decent amount of paint on here. Cells are already appearing. And what we're now going to do is just start to gently move this. And don't be scared of it, because it will move. It's acrylic, so there's a, a decent body to it. But you are going to get messy. I'm just going to I'm just going to say it out loud. You are going to get. No, if you're not prepared to get messy, this is definitely not the right thing for you. But having said that, I wasn't prepared to get messy either, and now I absolutely love it. So just you know, 
If you don't try, you'll never know, will you? It's lovely, isn't it? Andrew's just said it's like a lava lamp, and it is. He's quite right. So I'm just going to get this over to the corners as far as I can without using those corner pieces because I want to preserve some of that paint. So I'm just moving it up and down and it will start to drip and that's okay. Okay, don't worry about it. You're going to get paint on here. This is going to happen. So I'm going to take my corners now. I'm going to put my corner piece in place and I'm now just going to hold that firmly and just tip this. And this is why I would also recommend a turntable because you're working off the table. If you were trying to do this flat on a table and then try and move it, you're going to end up in a proper mess. So just get the right equipment. Yes, there's a little bit of an outlay. Well, there's, I'd say, a considerable outlay, you know, to get your paint and get your canvases. And but, but this is why, you know, this is what we live for, isn't it? We we do this because it's our hobby. We go to work and we earn money every day to be be able to do things that we enjoy. So why should this not be one of them? Now you can see as it's got to that corner, and I've let that frame go, it's just poured over the edges. This is why I've got all this mylar underneath here. You could just put cling film on, a piece of plastic, whatever. Doesn't matter. Just protect your, your surface because you will get paint everywhere, okay? It won't go on your carpet or it won't go off the edge of your table, but you will. it will drip, okay? It's just the nature of the beast. So if it's not for you, it's not for you. But until you try, you don't know, do you? And then this. And then I'm just going to pull this over here. And then I'm going to get this corner doing. And then when you pull this away, that all that paint will keep moving and it'll go around the edges of your canvas. Because if you are going to make and sell these, this is looking absolutely spectacular, I have to say. This is why I'm a little bit addicted, because every single one is different. Right, I need to get that corner in. I would leave this to dry for at least 48 hours, probably 72, to make sure that the, the paint right at the bottom is properly dry. I Please don't do what I did and do a beautiful um, bloom pour and then stuck my finger in it to see if it was dry. And it wasn't. Terrible. Terrible. Right, so I'm now going to let that just sink down there. So you can see there's a decent amount of paint coming off this canvas. That's exactly what I would expect to happen. Okay. Now, if you are a jewellery maker, you could then get some bezels and cut this and put it inside a piece of jewellery and um, fill it with resin. So you can cut all these. I'm going to try and get some bezels and then we can make stuff with this because I don't want to waste this. Cookie cutters. They definitely cut with a cookie cutter. Leave it to completely dry and then use the cookie cutter. Right, I'm just going to spin this first because I want these corners finished. So I'm literally just spinning it. And all that's going to do is move the paint a little bit more. This is why you need space, guys. Okay. Right, now then, blowtorch are ready. Hoping this is as dramatic as it was when we did it before. Get the blowtorch on and just go over. Look at this. Look how all these bubbles pop. Watch as these cells just start to appear. Look at this. Look at this! <laughs> now you know why I'm completely addicted. Look at this. This is just the most exciting thing ever. Look at it. This is when I do my happy dance and go, I love my job, I love my job. But this is popping all the bubbles at the same time and you're creating all these amazing cells. So don't hover for too long with your heat gun because you don't want to start that paint drying and, and it wrinkle. We don't want wrinkles, not in life or otherwise. Although I'm quite proud of my wrinkles, they're all paid for. Right, and then you're going to leave that to do its thing. I mean, just look at that. It looks a right royal mess around the outside, but that is absolutely beautiful. What I'll do is, um, once this is completely dry, I'll get some a close-up video for you, and I'll put it on um, 
on our social medias. I'll get Hannah to sort that out for us because it just looks spectacular. It's going to go in and make sure there's no more bubbles. But that, oh, honestly, I wish you could see this really close up because it's absolutely spectacular. And then I'm just going to spin it one more time just to try and get that edge covered. Look at that, look at that. Isn't that just the most amazing thing? Oh, just, and those cells, those cells will continue to develop for about another two hours. Uh, about two hours? Yeah, about two hours. Sorry, I had to think then. I'm trying to remember all this new stuff and I had to think. Yes, about another two hours. Now, normally I would have a lolly stick, but as usual, I've forgotten something. It's not me if I don't come into here and I've forgotten something. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the paint on my finger and I'm just going to tap it around these edges. Okay, we're not going to get too precious about, oh, you can't do this and you can't do that. If it needs filling in, fill it in. Okay. And then we're going to lift this off. So this is where I would have gloves. I've got a trolley that I'm going to bring in and I've got mylar on there. In fact, I'm going to go and get the trolley. So you stay there and I'll come back, okay? I'm going to go and get this trolley, then you can see what we're doing next. So we have a trolley. You don't need a trolley. You just need to be able to leave it to dry, basically. But we've got a trolley. And someone's filming in here tomorrow, and it's not me. <laughs> so I need to make sure that it's right for them. Right, bear with me one minute while I just pick all the stuff off the floor. I've just dropped. Brilliant, Melanie. Right, so on my trolley, on the trolley, I've got sets of five tall cups. So like this. So I've got five of these, one in the middle and one for each of the corners. And I'm going to put my canvas on top of those so that the paint can continue to drip and the cells can continue to move, but we can carry on and do another pour. So this is where gloves come in. Of course you can wear gloves when you're pouring, if that makes you feel better. I quite like the fan. And this again is like a million miles away from where I used to be. I actually quite like getting paint on my hands. I think it feels like I've done something, <laughs> Joe. But this is gonna look absolutely amazing. I love the cells. I'm just gonna try. Oh yeah, can activate some more there, look. Let's see if we can get a few more going on in there. That's going to look magic. I love it. And every time you do it, it will be slightly different. That's the great thing about it. So it looks really messy at the moment because it's on that turn turntable and there's paint all over the actual mylar that's underneath it. But once it's dried, I'm going to get a really close up photograph for your video and then we'll put it out. So I'm just going to lift this now carefully. <gasps> Ooh, don't breathe and then move it over here and put it on top of the cups and then that will just continue to drip now just go back to it every now and again and just wipe your finger or use a, a um, lollipop stick and just make sure that all the drips are being taken off but that uh, that's one of my favorites so far I really love that that's really cool right so I'm going to take this cling film off here and recling this, and then I'm going to show you a different way of using your pouring paint and a different paint as well, which is super cool. So I'm going to tidy this up, you come back, and then we'll do another one. See you in a bit. Bye. If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you click the like button. Subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to receive notifications of all our future content. You can also click here to see our latest video or click here to see more videos like this one.